Hello everyone, this is Robert, and this is the Longer LK5 Pro Upgraded 3D Printer. And in this video, I'm going to be giving you my thoughts and impressions, going over some of the features and specs of this thing, and then giving you a final overall rating of this printer using my fancy little rating system. So let's get started. Feel free to use the chapters in this and all my other videos to skip around and find the content that you're looking for. Longer did provide this printer for review. However, there's no additional financial compensation and they do not have any say in this content whatsoever. They don't really get to dictate what I say and edit this video in any way. That being said, let's talk a little bit about my review system or my rating system. Um, the rating system got a little bit of flack in the last video where I reviewed the um, Sidewinder artillery behind me. And what I wanna say is that I'm not trying to make every printer a perfect 10 out of 10 just if it works. What I'm trying to do is create a rating system that will account for a $100 printer all the way up to a $10,000 printer. What is the most perfect user experience? What is the absolute best print quality that should get a 10? And in many cases that might not even be achieved by anything I'm gonna re be reviewing on this channel and technology is moving very rapidly. So if you see a, let's say a five rating on print quality that is going to be representative of the average that is available right now and i don't think a five out of ten is bad so keep that in mind when you see ratings in the 50 percent or 60 percent that just means that this is average for what is available at the time it is not meant to disparage the product in any way just go to the sections and see why i'm giving it a certain ratings thing things might be a little bit above average or a little bit below average but there are reasons for this and i'm kind of using average a five out of 10 as my baseline, but I also wanna allow for enough headroom if something is exceptional. Okay, so now that I have all that out of the way, let's talk about just the kind of basic features and specs. This is the LK5 Pro Upgraded. The difference between the upgraded and the non-upgraded is basically this head right there. The non-upgraded has a single cooling fan. This has the dual cooling fan, so you got one on each side for theoretical better layer cooling and better bridging and things like that. The um, difference between them is about $350 for the non-upgraded and about $370 for the upgrade. So it's about a $20 difference. It's a pretty standard printer. Um, you've got a 300 by 300 by 500 millimeter build volume. You use a Bowden setup versus a direct drive. And it's big claim to fame is you've got these large supports that make the Z a lot more rigid. And it does feel quite a bit more rigid than something like the Sidewinder. Although I'm not really seeing any you know, significant difference in print quality. Maybe without these, it gets a little bit more wobbly up top, who knows. Um, other than that, you've got a really nice color touchscreen with a pretty decent interface. And um, yeah, that's about it. So let's get into the first category. My first category is ease of use. How easy is it to use? How beginner friendly is it? And how easy is it to set up, put together, all of that good stuff. There is a bit of assembly in this and some of the things are kind of strange in the assembly. So that's maybe a little bit below average for me. The included cure profiles are not very good. Um, I'm maybe being a little bit critical here, but every single print was printing with a raft by default, which is kind of strange. And the print profiles just overall don't seem very tweaked. They seem very generic for any printer and they just don't really seem very specific or well thought out. The instructions are, you know, okay, average or slightly below average for this type of printer, but beginner friendly, I just don't think it's a great beginner friendly printer. The bed leveling is just really difficult as you know any of these screw type things are. It does not have a touch probe so you are going to be fiddling with this quite a bit to get it level and more on that later if you have even the re slightest bit of warp in the bed you're gonna have a hard time. Overall though it did go together just fine. I'm obviously printing fine with it. Um, I do have a lot of experience with 3D printers um, but it just was a little bit fiddly to get going. Regarding the assembly and the instructions, there's a couple things that were really strange. One being the um, Z limit switch. It's a little switch sits over there. And basically when the gantry comes down for that zero point, it touches off of it. 
They did not have this installed, which I thought was eh, a little bit strange, but the thing that was weird is they just had a little sticker over it to indicate the height. Well, my sticker was like, you know, at a 15, 20 degree angle, and that's supposed to be where you install that as the height. This is absolutely critical for the functioning of the printer. Granted, you can adjust the little screws and adjust the bed, but there was no real good way to tell where that switch was supposed to be installed. So you just kind of had to install it, move it up a little bit, move it down. It was a real, a lot of trial and error to get that right. And just having a sticker on the side was just an insulting way to go. So I wasn't really thrilled with that. And that is a very critical piece to a large scale printer like this. So I'm giving this overall a four out of 10. It was slightly below average, but you know, nothing is a critical fail. So the next category is flexibility. This one's a little hard to describe, but basically if you find some really cool new filament or you find some thing on Thingiverse, you know, how easily can you print it? How flexible is this printer? It is a large scale printer, so you're not gonna be really limited by the size of something. However, because it does use a relatively basic Bowden setup, you're going to be limited by the types of materials that you can print. Flexible filament is not going to work very well on this. There are significant gaps in the um, filament path up top. You're gonna have some binding jamming and it's gonna spit out like spaghetti. You do not have an all metal hot end, so you are not going to be able to do any higher temperature filaments like your carbon fibers, your nylons, things like that. So you're gonna be pretty limited to your most common um, materials out there. In addition, you don't have a volcano style hot end or a larger style hot end. Um, so you're gonna be limited to relatively slower speeds, relatively common filaments. The one plus that I will have for this on overall flexibility is that it does have these little clips and you can remove the print bed and either replace it or do some other type of print bed as opposed to something like the Sidewinder that has an absolutely fixed print bed, having this removable one gives you a little bit extra flexibility. So I'm calling this a 4.5 out of 10. It's maybe just slightly below average, but there's nothing too critical here. You can upgrade the hot end. Eh, upgrading the um, Bowden setup would be a little bit complicated, but overall it will do most of what you're trying to do aside from all the exotic stuff that's out there. So next category is user experience. How um, pleasant is this thing to use on a daily basis? Does it have all those little quality of life features that make it nice to use? Um, yes and no. Uh, first I'll start off with the pros and the things that I like. It actually has a decent interface. I think the um, interface is might maybe slightly above average for a printer at this level. The touch screen is nice. The color screen is um, a lot bigger than the Sidewinder. And it just, you know, everything is on there. I had some significant issues with the Sidewinder, I don't really have any significant issues with this. It would be nice if the um, thumb drive or the um, micro SD slot wasn't all the way at the back of the printer. It'd be nice if it was up here. Little tiny issues like that. Um, another nice thing is it does have a lot of the basic features that you would expect in firmware. It has auto power resume. If I was just to pull the plug on this and plug it back in, it would resume. You have a filament runout sensor back there. It has a lot of that stuff covered. For the negatives, I would say the biggest negative that this has is it has this large bed. You only have these four manual bed leveling adjustments in the corners, and that's it. It doesn't have a probe, it doesn't have all the bed leveling, nothing else. Is that to be expected at a printer of this price? Well, I don't know. That's not for us to judge in this category. We're just talking about user experience. And because it doesn't have a probe, you end up with a situation where if you have a slight bow in the bed, which this one does, you can only level it in the center or in the corners. I went through and tried to level this completely flat and I had a situation where it was actually touching the nozzle in the middle, like rubbing in the middle. And um, I think it was about 0.2 millimeters in each one of the corners, so actually a little bit high in the corners, but touching and rubbing and digging in in the middle. That's gonna happen, that's why things have probes and auto bed leveling. So I think that is a massive issue for a printer like this. It's a large bed. You cannot expect it to be perfectly flat. And if you can only adjust in the four corners, you're kind of dead in the water. So I see that as a pretty big negative. The um, Bowden extruder is not my favorite thing in the world. Swapping filament on this is not very fun. I actually went inside and undid all these connectors and chamfered them out and gave it a nice soft edge. That made things a lot better, but it was catching. Um, this little arm is actually a little bit fiddly. 
the Z end stop was another thing that I was kind of talking about. It has a lot of um, little um, sacrifices here and there that make the user experience not nearly as good as it could be. And there's definitely some cost cutting measures that overall just don't really give it a great user experience. So for this reason, I'm giving this a 3.5 and that's a relatively low rating, but you can't print on the entirety of this print bed if it's warped like this one is based on just the design and the lack of the touch probe. That being said, they do have a way to add the touch probe, but then of course it adds to the cost and it looks like a very fiddly installation because you gotta run it through the wire loom, um, update the firmware. You have to do a lot of things to make that happen. So, you know, it's a little bit of an extra stretch. So 3.5 out of 10, definitely below average for the state of 3D printers today. So print quality, that's really ultimately what matters. Um, everything else can be a moot point as long as it prints well. So what I do for the print quality is I have four standard prints that I use the exact same filament, dried overnight, and I'm using the standard print profiles. I'm trying to get this as equal as I can between printers, but obviously print profiles are gonna change. So let's take a closer look at these, and I have um, these all printed out on all the other printers I've used. So let's get a comparative basis on what the print quality looks like. So first off, we'll start out with the Benchy, which is of course the benchmark for this. Um, here we've got two from the LK5. We have the Mini, and then we also have the Sidewinder X2. Um, the Mini definitely wins this in my opinion. It is nearly flawless. There's really no issues whatsoever. A lot of this is based on the really good print profiles and just, you know, it's a decent printer. If we look over at the two LK5s, I'll show you why I had two of them. Um, one of them actually had the loose belts. This is how it came standard. And you can see a little bit of lines there. You can see um, a little bit of banding here. Nothing bad, but this is what loose belts will give you. Once I tuned the belts, it got a little bit better, but most of this is just going to be the print profile, which actually needs quite a bit of tuning and tweaking. Um, the smoke snack stack is good. Everything looks pretty good. There's a little bit of stringing and overhanging um, up there in the window and compared to the Sidewinder, they're pretty similar overall. I think the Sidewinder is um, probably in second place behind the Prusa Mini, and this is probably the worst of the three, but eh, nothing really too bad. It looks pretty good overall. Next up, we've got the Matter Hackers Astronaut, and they're all actually very similar, and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on them. Um, you can see the feet printed um, pretty good. There's a little bit of um, gaps in the filament down there. This is really just bed leveling. It's really, really hard to get a perfect level bed on there. Um, underneath the hands, that's a little bit of an overhang. Printed pretty good. Here it is compared to the Prusa Mini. It's okay. You know, they're all about the same. There's really not a big difference between these. There's a little bit more um, zitting and blobbing on the Sidewinder X2, but overall, all three of these are pretty good with um, nothing major. You can see in the actual logo here, just a tiny bit of ringing. Um, they're all pretty similar though. So now on to this little 3D printer test. Um, this is actually a little bit more telling. Um, we actually don't see much ringing um, down here in the text, which is pretty good. There's just a tiny bit more ringing over here on the X2, maybe hard to see on camera. Everything else looks pretty similar. If we look around the back, um, all the little towers look pretty good. You know, to my eyes, I think the, um, LK5 Pro actually does a little bit better on the towers than the Sidewinder did. Um, the Prusa Mark II or the Prusa Mini is actually, I think, probably the best overall. If we look over here on these little sections, you can see they're a little bit worse on the X2 and actually not too bad on the LK5 Pro. Now, the biggest issue that we have here are the overhangs, which I thought was really, really surprising. Because of the dual fans, the LK5 should actually be the best, but it ended up being the worst by far. Um, if we look at these overhangs, it is just an absolute mess. The Mini did pretty good, and the Sidewinder did about the same, just maybe slightly different, but this, this is actually pretty bad. I was expecting the overhangs to be better based on those dual fans, but it ended up failing pretty hard. And if we look at the um, lettering going up, 
you can see that it just kind of starts to get away from it around the 50 to 60 mark, where the others are between 60 and 70. So the overhangs are just not nearly as good. And I did try this a couple times and it just really had a hard time with these. And lastly, we've got the Maker's Muse Clearance Castle. Not a whole lot to talk about here. There's a little bit of an overhang here in the gate. Um, the Prusa Mini did the best job. The X2 and the LK5 are about the same. The biggest thing that I want to point out is with the actual tower here that rotates around, the Prusa Mini is exactly what you'd think. It's very smooth and it moves in and it feels like a natural puzzle. Both the Sidewinder and the LK5 more so with the LK5, really, really rough, and it doesn't really feel like it should be working. And I had to break this free. It was pretty hard to break this free. It took a lot of effort to actually break that free. Um, overall, you know, they're both pretty good. There's not a whole lot of ringing. Um, all the details are there. This test really isn't as brutal as um, Maker's Muse is making it out to be. It's actually pretty easy. I've never seen a printer fail with this, um, but it definitely did not do as good of a job on the LK5 as it did on the Prusa Mini or the Sidewinder, but it's a very, very small margin. I would say overall, um, you know, Prusa Mini is going to be the best um, by a pretty easy margin. The LK5 Pro is just maybe a half a point behind the X2, just based on the overhang. It also does not have very good print profiles. Um, the top quality and the bottom quality just aren't as good as the other two, but it's a very, very small margin, just a half a point lagging behind. So overall print quality is a 6.5 out of 10, definitely above average, but lagging slightly behind the X2 and definitely lagging behind the Prusa Mini. All these are in, you know, roughly the same price category. I think the biggest surprise was that it didn't have that great of overhang performance, actually really poor overhang performance. Everything else was actually really good. The light print head gives it really low ringing, but it needs something more on the actual layer cooling. And I have seen some people doing um, upgraded uh, layer cooling ducts. So maybe that's something that could improve it further. But of course, I'm only evaluating this as it comes standard out of the box. So 6.5 out of 10, definitely above average. So value is the final category before we go into the overall ranking and conclusion. And value is a formula that I've created that just kind of looks at all the other categories, looks at where its price point is, and just makes a determination based on that. This comes out to an 8.9, which is very, very high, and I think that is justified. It doesn't do anything amazingly well, but it does most things pretty good, and the overall print quality is above average. So once you get everything dialed in, once you get it tweaked, and if you're using it in standard applications, not trying to do anything too tricky or use weird filaments with it, it will generally produce very good results. So I think an 8.9 is very much justified given that this printer is only $370 for a 300 by 300 by 500 millimeter build area. Five years ago, this would have been absolutely insane for $370. So I think it goes to show how advanced 3D printers are getting. So in conclusion, according to my rating scale, this thing gets a 55.7% out of 100. So just slightly above average. And I think that is due to the value and due to the pretty decent print quality. It has a relatively decent user interface. The build quality is actually relatively decent as well, but it does fail on a couple things. It fails on the bed leveling. The fact that it does not have any kind of probe or bed leveling means that you might not be able to use the whole size of the bed without a lot of issues. It doesn't have a volcano or larger hot end, so you're not gonna be able to push a lot of material through it. You're gonna have to go relatively slow and it is relatively inflexible with using different types types of material. Most of these things can probably be fixed by upgrades or tweaks or tunes, but then you might be in the price range of something like the Sidewinder. So you just kind of have to weigh if you only have $370 to spend or if you can get a good deal on this. It is going to be a cheaper option, so it does have a higher value proposition, um, and you can ultimately get really good prints out of it. It is not a bad printer by any means. It is just I think perfectly hitting the price point and you can see where they're cutting costs when you compare it to other printers of a higher cost. Um, hopefully this gave you a little bit better idea about the longer LK5 Pro. Uh, please leave any comments below. I'm sure a lot of people are going to do so. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.